How do you fare, my loyal nine patriots? Welcome back. If big tech thought of us as being crazy conspiracy theorists, why are they so afraid of us? Is anyone afraid or concerned about the guy on the street yelling that the end is near? No. We dismiss them as being crazy and it affects nobody. So if big tech paints us as crazy men on the street, crazy women on the street, tinfoil hat wearers, why do they feel so compelled to unperson us, strip us of our basic societal utilities? And that's right, big tech is a basic societal utility. They do it because they're scared. They're scared of you, the consumer, the critical thinker, the logical human that understands that two plus two does equal four. Big tech understands that patriots know how to mobilize and organize, which is why communist countries censor information flow and in group level organizations. This mass censorship, it was never about hate speech, QAnon, disinformation. It's about suppression of the truth suppression of reality and most importantly they want power over the common man and i fear that if we don't spread the message this message or any other message about freedom and liberty we will end up becoming like china russia or any other communist ran country that censors their people the state owns the media they censor the information flow and that's where we're headed but they made a critical strategic error. They discounted the American patriot who refuses to back down, who refuses to be a lamb, but instead chooses to be a lion. Something we have to consider. It's very easy for big tech to label us as crazy tinfoil hat wearers by catchphrases and simple but effective headlines. Unfortunately, because we have so many people that refuse to just think outside the box and question mainstream media and big tech, they assume everything that they say is true. By design, this is giving the conditioned end user a talking point, but nothing to back it up with because they've done absolutely zero research. But when they're challenged by someone who has done their research, like you, like me, that conditioned end user gets angry because that's not what they were told by the talking head, by social media, because that conditioned end user, it's not our father who art in heaven. To them, it's our father who art in Silicon Valley. We have to remember that the real action is in the enemy's reaction. They'll make a mistake, as they always do, and that's when we come to strike. But how did we come to this? I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can. What allowed these authoritative communists, these tech giants to flourish are three things. And that's what all authoritative regimes rely on. People living in fear, habit for obedience, and dependence on the authoritative regime. But we the people, the loyal nine, the patriots, we refuse to live in fear. We refuse to obey propaganda. We strive for personal responsibility. We no longer play by their rules. We have broken through and it's making them scramble. We see through the fake calls of unity and healing and recognize what it really is. It's a call for submission. To our credit, we the people know how to master the basics organization and mobilization. They want to isolate us because isolated individuals have little to no impact on making a change. But patriots feel so targeted that we are rallying together and unifying. Whether big tech realize it or not, they need us. We don't need them. They need us to see every ad, give them every click, but no longer do we have to do that. We have other options and they hate it. That's why they're banning it. Big tech is bleeding money. And it's because of patriots like you and me saying, I'm sick and tired. I'm not standing for this anymore. You are the reason why they are scared. Your actions, you're fighting back. Look how much money they have lost in the past month. They know 
what we say is true and it scares them. Where they've become so echo chambered, they don't even know what reality is anymore and they can't get unplugged. However, we need to thank two individuals for unplugging many Americans and really setting the stage for future generations. Those two individuals are Barack Hussein Obama and President Donald J. Trump. Obama turned a lot of liberals into conservatives by preaching a fake message of hope, change, and America first style policies, ending foreign wars, but ended up doing the complete opposite. He sold us out, which ended up being a driving force behind President Donald Trump. Many vocal and well-known President Trump supporters were former Obama supporters, but they woke up and second and third order effects began to take root, thus leading us to the second order effect. My favorite generation, and I'm looking right at you, Generation Z, the most conservative generation out there. Tech giants know this, and again, it scares them because they will be the future patriot conservative movement. Which brings us to the third order effect. The future of America. They will be shaping what our country looks like. To help make this more easily understood, shed some light on this is a simple phenomenon known as the Overton window. Without getting too deep into the weeds, let's imagine a line. And on the left side of the line is when Lenin was seizing power during the Russian Revolution, banning books, burning books, purging libraries, academic journals, journalists, anything that was against the state was not allowed. Complete and total censorship. That's on the left side. Then if we look in the center, this is the acceptable portion by society. What policymakers do, lawmakers do to try to enforce this. That center would say, no, censoring people is not good. Burning books is not acceptable. Purging libraries is not acceptable. Freedom of speech is acceptable as long as you are not calling for the murder of people. You're not inciting violence. It's what society would accept. What policymakers try to do. They try to enforce the laws in the center. It's acceptable. Then we move to the right of the Overton window. And that is unacceptable, which is complete freedom to write, publish, call for violence, anything you can think of. It's all go. Anything goes on the right side. That is unacceptable. So you have the left and the right unacceptable, but the middle ground. Right now, what we're seeing is a shift towards the left side. Big tech is censoring people and people accept it. They praise it. They're taking away people's freedom of speech and people are praising it. But what big tech doesn't understand is that we, the people, the patriots, the loyal nine, we see the shift in the Overton window and we're shifting it back to the center because that's where it needs to be. Generation Z gravitates towards the conservative content creator, loyal nine, Steven Crowder, salty cracker. They gravitate towards that because they don't want communism. They want freedom and prosperity, big tech. They hope that by censoring conservative platforms, they can prevent the spread of information that Generation Z would be getting. Even Recode co-founder Kara Swisher caught her son watching Ben Shapiro and on TV asked YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki to ban the Nazi-loving Jewish Ben Shapiro. But let's take a dive into history. Just because our constitution says we have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to assemble, that doesn't mean it's without communist influence. While Obama was in office, he was caught trying to use pop culture and people of influence to push his agendas on the population because they knew he knew they were unpopular. Now what do we see with Beijing Biden? His crew, his cronies, they're in bed with big tech. They're in bed with Mark Zuckerberg. Just because we have freedom of speech doesn't mean it's without communist influence. Just look at China and their constitution, which was written in 1982. Look at Article 35. It states, and I read, Citizens of the People's Republic of China enjoy freedom of speech, of the press, of assembly, of association, or possession and demonstration. I wonder how that's going for them. So what can we do as loyal nine, as patriots? Nil desperatum, my loyal nine. 
never despair. The tech giants may appear invincible, but they will crumble. All communist regimes throughout history have always appeared to be this unstoppable force, but we have to continue the fight because they're not unstoppable. They may be scared of us, but we can no longer sit on the sidelines. Internal struggles within big tech are happening. Radical policies and censorship will eventually come back to haunt them and do more harm than good. And most importantly, we are seeing a mass exodus of patriots leaving these platforms. Even normies are leaving. Using alt text such as Gab, BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, it's not going to stop. People are going to keep leaving. And I encourage you all of you to follow me on there, on these platforms, and get the hell off Twitter. Get the hell off YouTube. I would rather have your support on there than on YouTube. I'll close with a quote from Machiavelli. The greater the cruelty, the weaker the regime becomes. Loyal Nine out.